Hey everybody, it's Christian Jensen, Listening Voice Media, and I'm here with my son Connor, 23 years old, handsome guy, one of my best friends and heroes, and uh, I just wanted to let him tell you a little bit about his uh, his growing up and, and some of his thoughts, and I'll ask him some questions for a few minutes here and just see where it goes, and thanks for participating with me. I know you don't... He's not a huge fan of me sitting him down in front of a video, but anyway, what what tell us a little bit about uh, your life growing up, Connor? Well, um, about 13 years ago, I my parents divorced, and I was about you know, 10 years old at the time. It was really rough for me. Um, <clears throat> around that time, I um, really didn't have any problems. I was friends with everyone that I can, you know, and I was a really cool guy. But after that divorce, kind of just set me in a hole, and I kind of distanced myself from a lot of people, um, except for one of my best friends who stuck with me through everything. And, you know, we never, he protected me from a lot of um, instances. And uh, around sixth grade, when I got into sixth grade, he transferred schools. So I was all by myself throughout that year. And um, I had um, this one incident where a kid had come up to me with a couple other guys and was talking, saying some stuff. Um, and as I tried to walk away, he turned me around and just clocked me in the eye and I just fell to the ground, was completely dazed, just didn't know what happened. But then I got that rush of pain and I took off running to the office and they later brought the kid in. We, they sat down with him and told him his side of the story and he made some stupid excuse to make me look bad, even though I'm the one that got hit and never provoked him or anything. And I just moved on from that incident and I just realized, you know, I'm just going to be alone for the rest of my life. You know, you know, I still had my one friend, he was at a different school, but he still lived up the street from me and he helped me get through a lot of the crap I went through. Um, and then throughout middle school, just same thing was getting harassed and not beat like touched or anything. Just the words were the worst, you know, they were calling me names and what would they call you? Uh, it's hard to say it was so long ago but yeah. I, they were just they were like stabbing yeah like because you know I was still going through my parents divorce this is about three to four years after the divorce and I was still just I was trying to get through it I had gained a lot of weight and I was just really out of place and I had a couple friends that kind of stuck with me through sixth grade to seventh and eighth and ninth but they just really didn't do much to help me get through all the pain and suffering and um, then around, you know, ninth grade, um, my freshman year, I had gotten, I, I would go to gym class and it was one of my least favorite classes because I knew that there was a few bullies that were in there that would harass me during gym class. Cause you know, it's an open period pretty much. They just set you all free. You go play the activities or do whatever, just to get credit for the class. And really there's no adult supervision. And, and the locker room stuff too. Yeah, that was just really, that was the only place there would be the supervisor in there to make sure we're not, you know, dicking around or not doing things we shouldn't. But um, it was you, not a daily occurrence, but it was it would happen every so often where I'd have a couple of these bigger guys. At the time, it was a little, you know, a little smaller than them, and they were really built up, like they've gone to the gym a lot, and they just harass me and they would you know take when I'm playing basketball or I had the ball and then they would take it from me and then they would say you should try to get it from us and you know there's two of them and they would just mess with me and it's like you know if you've seen movies you know they harass the nerd with taking the ball it's like that was in that same position mm -hmm. um, and then I finally just <clears throat> nearly had it I had finally just yelled at them I just said screw this I'm done walked out of the room, out of the gym, and my uh, teacher at the time, she was the girl um, for my class, and she told me to come back when I just said, screw this, I'm done, I, and she wouldn't help me. I begged her to <clears throat> come forward and talk to these guys and tell them, and she said, oh, nothing's wrong. Um, they're not, they're just boys, they do that when really they shouldn't do that, you know. Mm -hmm. They've been doing this for years to me. And I went to the office, I called my dad up, and I, ended I remember up, that I just said come here now I'm gonna I'm gonna break these guys necks like I'm, I'm 
I'm this, I'm super close to doing it. Yeah, you were, you were, you were, I could hear that tone in your voice, like, you come get me now or, there, or I'm going to, something's going to go down. And I remember yeah. just, what did I say? Just stay there. Yeah. Don't move. <laughs> and I took sure off. Enough, and I just, I just sat there in the office the whole time. I mean, and even my teacher came in later and she said, you need to come back to class. And I said, screw that. I'm not going back there again. I'm, I'm done with this. So if I go back, I'm going to break those kids. Do you, do you feel like, do you feel like bullying is the cause of, of, certain people taking their lives oh yeah i mean mine did you ever did you ever well i i know some things that these guys don't know but do, maybe whatever you want to share i mean well, feel free to honestly know. like mine i look at all the cases now like there's a lot of me i was just back in school and we didn't really have social media outlets you know we did have facebook and a couple of sources at the time but we didn't have enough to spread word about bullying and you know i didn't really have the help and people thought oh bullying was nothing it's it's just guys you know, or girls and they're just you know you need to grow up and get past it all which i did um later on um <clears throat> and my but i see all these videos of these kids surfacing of you know the one kid who was chased down the hallway of um just getting pushed and punched nonstop, and he tried to stand up for himself and that got national attention and you know one of the um, mma fighters said he told, gave a personal oh, boxer yeah. yeah he gave a personal message to him and i thought that was awesome but so what do you what do you what would you tell people out there um on both sides of the equation yeah. what what well, would you tell anyone watching right here first off i would tell the bullies especially that what are you doing <clears throat> you know it you're really it's you think it's funny and you think oh i'm just doing it for fun no it's it's deeper than that you're you're pretty much giving stabbing someone in the chest with a knife every time you do it and you know you wouldn't go up to your mom or your dad or your sibling and just with a sharp knife and just stab and like hi ah, you got you got stabbed oh well it's you know no mm -hmm. it's just much deeper than that you're doing damage that you know these kids are committing suicide daily because they feel that no one's out there to help them. Did you ever feel that way? Like all literally? The time. Yeah, all the time. I mean, mine. My, I look at it now, like all the videos, like I said, I've seen that are probably much worse than I went than what I went through. But because um, you know these kids are probably by themselves from the beginning. Me, I've had a couple people to help me push through it, which I did around. <clears throat> well, I've always you know, had your back, right? Yeah, and you know, even in high school, when I jumped into high school, kids, I was friends with for years you know i played football with and they this had, was the worst they, time at least in my opinion watching him go through high school without a without a single friend i mean i'm talking four years of high school we even tried a different program a different different high school where he did really well with for a while and then um even i mean even up all the way through graduation i mean there was there was one guy that came up and took a picture with you yeah. and mm -hmm. that was like it i mean yeah. it, i i watched him i have it on video he was just he he was just like ousted. It's funny, hard, n nobody that I wa saw even came up to him or said anything, or and it was that ignoring and feeling it invisible. That it, from what he tells me, right? Yeah, it's that it's that lack of of uh, social interaction that that he's lacked the most, and that I think that was worse than any bullying, really. Yeah, that's the main thing, and I just, I, I, I don't blame it all on the divorce, even though that I pretty much, like I said, I distanced myself from everyone. That was the for, start? For about five years of that, I just distanced myself until about high school, you know, I had I many occasions I would be driving in my car, and I just was still like halfway through high school, you know, or I'd be a junior and I'd just be driving home after work and I would just have that feeling of like, man, well, I could just end it all right now. I'll just drive off the road and end it right there. Or at least seriously injure myself and maybe get attention from someone. But, yeah. and after that, I just, I, something popped in my head and just woke me up and I said, what am I doing? And I got out of my hole. I, and I pushed forward and I got through high school and I had the mindset of, just get through high school, get all your work done, and once you're done, you don't have to deal with the crap anymore. And that's what happened with me. I had, um, I had 
you know, every day after school, you know, you'd ask me, um, it's like, Hey, do you have homework? I'm like, it's done. It's like, got it done. It's like, yeah. Cause kids, you know, they get some of their work done then they go home and they screw around, play with their friends, do whatever. And then they, you know, would have a last second to get their last assignment in and, you know, they'd usually fail or something. Me, I just got everything done in school, in the class I was doing it. And I barely had homework and I passed you know graduated with advanced honors diploma so well, and even I, that, even yeah. then you you kind of at the end you were kind of tanking because you just it, you just didn't well, even want, want to be in he, it, it's it's an incredible thing what um neglect does to to somebody i've watched this guy from an infant all the way up through to 22 23 years old now and uh it's incredible to watch how someone can be so um, healthy and present at 23 years old, and and realize looking back at how much he'd been he's been ignored and ousted and and put to the side from from people his age and different things, and it's it's been it's been an interesting road to watch, um, my boy. But I've. It's we have a, a really good relationship, which I'm grateful for. I'm very grateful for because I love this guy more than anything, and uh, he gets sick of me a lot. But that's that's normal. And uh, I think that, what what do you want to say? I was gonna say. Well, I also had advice for those that are getting bullied mainly. But um, first thing I would just say is like, well, ignore all the crap. There's. I mean, these guys are wasting their time to pick on you and, you know, make your life miserable. Well, you can only let those affect you. I mean, you're the only one that can let your emotions, you're the one that controls your emotions. And I have a buddy of mine, really close friends with, you know, every day he posts something and he posted this one the other day. He just said, again, you control your emotions. Don't let anyone else change that. Yeah. So if someone's, you know, picking on you, treating like, treating you like crap, just ignore them. Just kind of la look at them, laugh at them, and say, yeah, that's great, cool, nice joke right there, and then walk away. Um, and then then going on from that, you know, tr try to find a, something that excites you, that gets, wants you to come back. Like me, I w it was, he thinks it's been a lot of gaming, and it has been, like I game a lot, and that's how it, <laughs> how it, I kind of got through it all, because I enjoyed it, but I, you know, I had found other passions where I, again, I made friends with this guy I've been friends with about six years now and Nate. it's Nate and he, you know, he got me into break dancing and then skating and same with my, um, one of my best friends from elementary school before he transferred to schools, he, he got me into skating and I met Nate through him and it was just kind of, it was crazy, you know, and I, it's crazy. I love how I've, but so I've had this passion for skating and dancing and especially music. And music's the biggest thing that's um, influenced me to where I'm at now. He's and, incredibly talented. Oh my gosh. And, if you want a good DJ right here, man. And the uh, main thing is, and you know, music's a powerful thing. And I'll say this, you know, listen to like your favorite song and sit or songs, you know, playlists, artists, whatever you want. None, none of the bull crap, like rap and stuff that kind of has a negative vibe. But me, I listen to a lot of EDM, if it's electronic dance music, and they have just thousands and thousands upon genres within this um, main uh, music area that I listen to. And it's, a lot of it has kind of gives you good energy, kind of gives you good energy, has like uplifting vibes, like kind of makes you want to just sit there and jam out a little bit. Um, and some of them just have like really co cool vibes to it where you could just sit there and then ponder, or think about, you know, your life and like the choices and even the people around you that are making those choices. So you find that music actually helps you open up and yeah. yeah. And it'll help those so you're that, suggesting you know, that. yeah. And a lot of these, you know, you may have sit there and you maybe not have money or anything to, you know, listen to music. Well, hop on YouTube or SoundCloud and just type up some, just something like soothing or chill or uplifting music in that genre I mentioned and it'll yeah. you'll find a lot of this it, guy goes to, he this guy has such a vast array of different music that he listens to I mean he listens to more than I've ever listened to in my entire existence he's he's a 
he's pretty well um, educated in the music field when it comes to being a connoisseur of music, wouldn't you say? Yeah. So, but yeah, I just say just get past all the crap, ignore it, all the bull, those idiots out there. They're just wasting their time. And Connor still lives at home, and he's. I'm. Are you are you looking forward to moving out at some point? Are you looking forward to? Yeah. Um, getting a girlfriend at some point? Are you looking for, what do you, what are your, tell people where you sit in your head right now. Well, pretty much what you just said. I'm, I am looking, I'm one day hoping to just make the money and, and be able to hop out and go find my own place. And then, you know, maybe at that time I, I, I can take school, a couple classes even before that. And I just, I don't know. I, there's so much I is on the plate and then I just, I just got to, point at something and do it yeah you can't just stop sitting around and saying oh i'm gonna do i bug do you that, a little so. bit about some of that stuff i yeah. <laughs> i drive him crazy i i i'm telling him to go date go meet some girls go go hit the gym more hit the you know what what are the things that i tell you to go do that <laughs> that i've tried to get connor to um get interested in putting himself in front of the camera and telling his story more and, and re reaching out to people who his story could help, you know? And don't, don't you think you, you're, I mean, you've shown interest in doing that, but it's just getting the initiative to start it up. Right. Yeah. What would you like to do with that? With something, anything like that? I don't know. At this point, just, this is a start, I guess. I, <laughs> I don't know. We can call this a start? I guess. All right. High five right there. Okay. This is a start. Hopefully we'll hear more from Connor um, as we go. But look at this guy, man. He's just, he's still, he's still, it's funny. He's my firstborn. And he's, I remember the second he came out, his little head popped out and I looked at him and I thought, you know what? A miracle right here. And, the, and I, I can't, it's indescribable. Um, the feelings I felt when, when he came into this world and, and now he's bigger than me and he's, he's a lot better looking than me and he's a lot smarter than me. And I'm just grateful for him in my life and, and for him sticking around and making the choice to stay here, even through all that bullying and all the neglect through his life. So, um, he's, I think he's on a good path. You feel like you're on a good path. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to say to everybody? No, I think that's it. Yeah. I love you, man. Love you too. Thanks.